So everyone, I want to welcome back to the show, Jeff Perlman. Um, for those of you who are familiar with Jeff Perlman, he too uh, is a uh, nationally and world-renowned author, um, sports journalist, and he and I worked together at Sports Illustrated, also with Grant Wall for a number of years. So Jeff is joining us to talk about um, his memories of Grant Wall, how they met, and just kind of reflect on uh, their interactions and who he was as a journalist and what he meant to the sports world. So Jeff, when did you guys, when did you guys first meet? So I arrived at Sports Illustrated in 1996, at the very end of 1996. And Grant had been there maybe two months. Um, and we all started, as you know, we started back in the day when Sports Illustrated was an enormous weekly magazine with, I mean, more than 3 million subscribers. And there was this thing in the, in the, in one hallway called the bullpen. And we were all hired as fact checkers, sort of writers or writer reporters and scratching and clawing to get our name in the magazine and just fighting to get any look. Um, it was almost like being sort of like a minor league ball player fighting to make the majors. And we were all in this hallway and there were two of us. And um, that's when I first knew Grant is we were both sitting in the hallway and had our, had our offices with other writers and just trying to make it in the business. And he was a very young, very hungry, very dogged. Um, and he was, uh, he, you know, out of Princeton from Kansas who really, really, the thing that was interesting about Grant, I mean, you and I talked about this the other day is um, he never had any doubt like I had a lot of doubt or not a lot of doubt, but I, I was intimidated by sort of the Rick Riley's and the Bill Nax and all those writers and being there with these superstars. And he, I don't think he ever was. I think he felt like he belonged from the beginning. So we were all in that world. I think that's one of the things that I remember most about Grant is um, his tenacity and his no fear attitude. Um, and that's one of the things that I really admired about him. And looking back and thinking about who he was, who we were, at Sports Illustrated at the time. So you got there in 96, I got there two years later in 98. So you guys were kind of already establishing yourselves. Um, he definitely had already had a cover story at that time. Uh, I think it was you, Grant, and my other fave, John Wertheim. So it was like the three of you. And they were kind of the young stars at Sports Illustrated at that time. Um, Jeff was the fun homeboy, right? Um, Wertheim, was fun in a different way. Hold on. Exactly. I'm not joking. Like when when Jeff texts me, you know, throughout the week, we, we keep in touch quite frequently. He'll just text one word, and it's usually word. I mean, that's you know, that's <laughs> Jeff. But yeah. you know, um, Wertheim was also fun, but in a different way. Wertheim really liked to get the info whether it be info about a story or it be gossip, like he was really into the stories behind the scenes and talking to you and sitting down with the girls in the library and just shooting the shit and just talking about things. But also a very brilliant writer like Jeff. Grant was all business, mm -hmm. all business, all the time. He was very much into research. He was very much into knowing his shit when it came to um, whatever topic he was writing about. Back then in the early days, he was covering college basketball. Um, so he hadn't really convinced SI to cover soccer yet. And so that's when I worked with him, Jeff, like those early days when he was still covering college basketball. When he switched over to soccer, then we kind of really didn't work together that much. I, I did maybe one or two soccer stories over my 18 years at Sports Illustrated. But early on, I, I experienced the hungry, hungry, Grant, like you just described, the one who had no fear, who would look anybody in the eye and say, you know, do you know who I am? I'm Grant Wall. This is what my story is. This is what I want to say. Do not edit my pieces. Do not change my words. Do not, like, even if as a fact checker, I was checking something that he wrote and there may have been a discrepancy, like, it was a fight because Grant knew whatever <laughs> he put on the table whatever he submitted, he knew that it was factual and that he had done everything he could to get the facts for that story. And I always admired and appreciated that about him. So for you guys, was he more than a colleague and more like a friend or what was he to you? I think 
Jeff was probably closer to him in that respect um, than I was. Um, Jeff, what do you think? I actually think it's really interesting. Like um, when someone passes away, our first reaction is to say every warm platitude about the person, which is totally understandable and fair. Um, but I almost feel like it's a little dishonest. Like Grant was actually really complicated. Um, as you sort of alluded to, we, we came up together and I had spent two and a half years at a newspaper before I got to Sports Illustrated. So I was a year older than Grant, but I spent a, two and a half years at the Nashville Tennessean. And I was, I got my, my asshole out of me at the Tennessean, a lot of it, where I would argue with editors and I thought I was the best guy there. And I thought I was amazing. You know, like, I, I got that out of me to a large degree. Um, and I got demoted when I was at the newspaper and I got punished a lot and I took risks that were stupid and I just did a lot of things. And at one point they offered me mentors and I actually turned them down. I said, I don't need mentors. This is when I was at the Tennessean. And I just got beaten with a stick a lot at the National Tennessean. I really did. And by the time I came to Sports Illustrated, I had a little more maturity because of that experience. And Grant didn't really have that experience. I think he had interned at the Miami Herald but he didn't have a staff position coming to SI. So, and John Wertheim, because the three of us were always moving up together. John had worked at Rip City Magazine. He also had a law degree. Like he had some experiences in his life. And Grant came and he was very young and he was very confident and he was definitely cocky and he definitely rubbed editors the wrong way as a young reporter. And in a lot of ways, it's funny because I wrote a, I wrote a book called Three Ring Circus about Jack and Kobe. And I'm not comparing like Grant Wall to Kobe Bryant. That's a stupid comparison. But like <laughs> when I wrote about young Kobe and he shows up with the Lakers, you know, he's talking trash to players and he thinks he's the greatest player in the NBA. And like what happens over time, what certainly happened to Kobe Bryant is you're not the same guy at 22 or even or 18 or whatever that you are at 40. And Grant through yeah. the years really became a sort of, mature presence in soccer, a elder statesman almost in soccer. He, he used his hunger, which he had from the beginning and his ambition, which he had in droves from the beginning to become this really important figure in U S soccer. And that's not an exaggeration. Like when we were, when, when Newman and I were at SI, nobody gave a shit about soccer. Nobody mm. cared about soccer. Mm. Like nobody cared about soccer. It was a non-entity of that magazine. If you had two soccer stories a year in SI, that was probably a lot. And he came right. along and he changed the approach to covering soccer. And a lot of that actually ties to his ambition, his doggedness, his bullheadedness, his determination. So what was maybe a weakness at 22 wound up being a real strength for him later on in his career. And I think like he and I definitely, and I'm sure you guys can picture it, you know, two headstrong um, reporters at SI. Now granted, pun intended, but granted, <laughs> granted. You know, he, he definitely had um, a far higher level of success at SI than I did. But I still believed in myself and in my work. And so we butted heads a couple of times. Nothing serious. Nothing serious. But the one time that we did butt heads where I was pissed, kind of, was after he left soccer, after he left college basketball and took on the soccer beat and was starting to transition and make that be his own. Mm -hmm. And he had made a comment, dogging college basketball, dogging the NCAA tournament. And so I felt like he was being a hypocrite. And so I called him out on it. And that was like our big kind of, you know, mm -hmm. butting heads moment. But then after that, I saw him like maybe two months after that in the, in the hallway. Um, and I wasn't gonna speak. You know me, I will hold Grant. Yeah. yeah, we know. I wasn't going to. And Grant also called me Newman. I, I, everyone at SI called me Newman, actually. Um, and he was like, hey, what's up, Newman? How you doing? And I, I was kind of shocked. I was taken aback because I was just like, oh, so we're not in a thing anymore, right? Okay, that's fine. Cool. And, you know, when I left Sports Illustrated in 2016, I was a part of that last round of layoffs in 2016. Um, hadn't seen or spoken to Grant in several months, but they, you know, I sent out a nice um, farewell email to everyone. And, you know, word travels, people knew who got laid off at the end of the year. And out of nowhere, Grant sent me a very nice departure email, you know, and it, it, it kind of like, like, like Jeff said, it was kind of 
enhancing or solidifying how complex people can be. Like in mm -hmm. one moment, they can be very um, intense. They can be very curt. They can be, you know, very tenacious and in your face and about business. But then there can be this other side. And I think we've seen the, a lot of people talk about the other side of Grant Wall over the past 48 hours, things or sides of him that I never even knew. Um, and even, you know, so when the, the incident happened with the LGBTQ shirt, mm -hmm. um, Neo and I were going back and forth about the intention behind that, who was right, who was wrong. And, you know, I was steadfastly defending Grant. Yep. I mean, 100%. Um, so it was a very long thread that we had <laughs> <Are> we, on, <laughs> online. It was very um, long. Going back and forth. <laughs> and at the end of it, I kind of, you know, paused and I was like, you know, who are you? Like, who is this Newman defending Grant Wall of all people? <laughs> because I, I just never imagined that, you know, I would be like, no, Grant, no, no, no. But I understood, at least from my perspective, I understood his intent in that moment and what he was talking about in that as it related to FIFA's and Qatar's hypocrisy. Um, but it, it's been it's been a weird 48 hours. Like, Jeff, how did you find out? Yeah, what were your first thoughts when you found out? So it's interesting. I found out very early on, actually, um, a former colleague of ours who I won't name just for his own privacy reached out to me and he said um he works in journalism still and he said i'm hearing this report about grant that he might have had a heart attack while covering the world cup and i was like oh my god no i hope this isn't true and i reached out to another colleague of ours and i said do you know anyone covering the world cup and this person said uh, yeah i do a lot of people and i said well i heard this about i said i'm not i made it clear i'm not trying to i I don't, this is not about reporting some news. I'm trying to find out. I just want to find out. And uh, then someone reached back out to me and said, I have really bad news. I think he, it sounds like he died. One of our reporters is telling me that he died of a heart attack. And the weird thing about it all, I kept saying this to my wife, is it happened in a press box where social media was functioning. It's not like Qatar cut off, you know, social media. Mm -hmm. It didn't get anything about it. In fact, the first person to put it on Twitter was Grant's brother. And I didn't even realize it was Grant's brother because he, he has a sort of strange moniker on Twitter. And um, I was really just, it's a, you know, I know this sounds simplistic, like really simplistic. It's weird that someone can exist and not exist, you know? And like you talk about someone like Newman and I have been talking about Grant and then you forget like, holy, whatever your religious beliefs are even like, this guy does not exist. Like he does not exist anymore. Like uh, I was texting yeah. him X number of days ago and now it doesn't exist. And it's yeah. weird. And then I was talking with Wertheim about it, a good friend of mine. And the thing that's sad about all this, one of the things that I hate about this whole thing is like, all right, he dies. We talk about him. We talk about him. We talk about him. We're, it's, it's heartbreaking. And, but then NFL Sunday comes or whatever comes and we just move on. Life, life moves on. I don't, I don't yeah. know what else. Well, I don't know what the alternative is. But it's all really jarring and it's really sad. And at the end of the day, his wife no longer has her husband and yeah. his, you know, his family no longer has their whatever, their brother. And it just sucks. Like it just on a human yeah. level really sucks. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, right. I too found out initially via text. Um and I got this it was a group text, and someone in the text was just like, I'm hearing this from a source. Um, and then the source wrote in the text that they had spoken to his wife. And she had confirmed reports that um, he had passed away in Qatar. And so I, I mean, I couldn't even scream. I was just like, you have got to be kidding me. And so I immediately texted two people, Jeff and our other former Sports Illustrated colleague, BJ Schechter, um, because those were the two guys that I had texted two weeks ago to get Grant's information to try to get him to come on this show. Grant and I had texted a week and a half ago about him coming on this show. And so under the umbrella of everything that happened with him being detained and you know him speaking out about what was going on in Qatar, of course, when I first heard that, I the worst, I thought the worst. And when I asked Jeff in my text, 
did you hear this? And Jeff responded, yeah, I think he had a heart attack. No, I asked Jeff if he heard it and he said, yes. And in capital letters, I'm like, what happened? Like, it was just so shocking. Yeah. So yeah. shocking because we were just talking about him. Yeah. He had just been Go on ahead, Fox say, the day before. Go ahead, Jeff. The other thing is, um, it's almost hard to explain in this era of journalism and media, but like the Sports Illustrated Newman and I came up in, I hate when people say like family because this team is a family, like it's cliche. But there was a real sort of almost like college dorm feel to it yeah. all. And it was all these people in this hallway who were really hungry and scratching and clawing. I'm like, I was fighting for the same bylines Grant was fighting for, Wertheim was fighting for, and like a million different people in that hallway. And we were all there. And then you'd go out and you'd drink with them and you'd whatever. And it's just like, now we're all, we are all in our 20s and now we're in our 40s and 50s. And it feels, I hate saying family, but it feels like a family member has died where yeah. the next hours, mm -hmm. there was all these Sports Illustrated people filling up my DMs, filling up Newman's mm -hmm. DM, what happened, what happened? And it just feels like a relative died. Yeah. That's how it feels. But Jeff, to, I mean, when we think about our colleagues and peers at work, we spend 40 hours plus a mm -hmm. week with these people, Sometimes more which is more time than I put in with my best friends, with some of, with a lot of my family members. So I can definitely appreciate that feeling of loss. Um, I know in the last few months, I we we lost a, a coworker and someone that I've known for 20 years. And that's walking into the building the first time was just such a surreal moment where that's it, just this person no longer exists. I'm never going to see Charlie in this building again. So I, I can really relate to what you're saying on, on a human level. I'm really connecting with that. We only have a couple of minutes think, left, so if we can kind of um, get some last I'm final thoughts. Say, one thing that also makes it kind of surreal, um, at least for me, is that experiencing this loss with the world also experiencing it at the same time. Like for the most part, you know, when we when someone dies, or a friend of ours, family, or whatever, it's a very personal experience that we have to explain to other people. I don't, I can't remember the last time I like turned on the news. And there is my former colleague being talked about his death or yeah. um, there being suspicion, suspicions about his death that people are writing about and commenting on or people asking me, hey, did you know this guy? And I'm like, yeah, I did. Like, it's just it's been just crazy. It's been yeah. crazy in the past 48 hours. So, Jeff, did you have any final thoughts about Grant and you know, what you what you felt? I think the one thing I will say is. Um... You know, Grant was a really good reporter and a really good writer and a really good guy. And when people, one thing that bothers me, and I hope people can avoid to a certain degree, is the speculation without basis, the mm -hmm. gossip. Yes, Twitter. thank you. How did he die? What happened? Mm -hmm. well, he was killed. You know, there were people, when I wrote something about Grant, who were filling it up. This was clearly blank. And I'm like, no, this was not clearly <laughs> blank. We actually don't know what happened. We have no idea what happened. Right. I'm not going to speculate that he was murdered, that he, I don't know what happened. And I just think we live in this era that's so, it's anti everything we learned at Sports Illustrated, which is report, 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 know your facts. So to me, his death is a horrible tragedy. I am terribly sad about it. It sucks a million times over, but I'm just not going to space. I'm going to speculate what happened. Yeah, I totally agree. And I feel that. like I've had to temper, I've had to temper the inclination to do that. Um, because like I said, you know, you, you automatically jump to one thing and you have these conversations privately, but I have no right to have that conversation publicly and put any of yeah. what I'm thinking behind the scenes out there for people to jump on as a part of some conspiracy theory. Like that's not responsible, that's not respectful to Grant or his family. Um, so yeah. Yep. Yeah. 100. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jeff, for joining us and talking about Grant. We have to get you back on the show again. I know. I know we've been trying to for weeks, but we've been haven't been able to work it out. So, but we want to talk yeah, about your your new projects and what you're stuff. working on now. You got a new book going out, so yeah. we've got to get you, you back on. Can you guys do me one favor and all agree with me, except for Newman, that Dara Hall has a better voice than Johnny Gill? Will you stop? Oh. <laughs> Daryl Hall and Oates. No, Dar Bye. Dar yes, Bye. definitely. Daryl Hall and Oates than Johnny Gill. I'm with you. <laughs> Voice than Johnny, than Johnny Gill? Gill? Yes. Oh, I'm man. going with I'm going with Daryl Hall. Oh, <laughs> All right.